In today's video, I have a Dollar Tree fall DIY you're not going to want to miss. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Melissa. I am pregnant mama of three and I am so glad that you decided to click on this video. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty, so if that is something you're interested in, I would love if you would stick around, become part of my crafty family. I have a huge goal of getting to 100K by the time my baby boy is born in October in about five weeks, and that's a big goal, but I know together that we can do anything we set our mind to. So hit that thumbs up, share this out. I have a new series for you guys. I'm really excited about it, so let me know down in the comments if this is something that you enjoy. I thought it would be really fun to call this series The Vault and I will go back in time, pull my oldies but goodies videos for my new viewers as well as my old viewers. I don't know about you but I can't remember what happened yesterday, let alone last year or two years ago. So I thought that it would be fun to pull things from the vault every other week and bring them to you. So let me know what you think. Let's jump into today's video and not waste any more time because I'm super excited to see what I made last year. Okay, you guys, to say that I'm excited about this project would be a total understatement. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to take 12 of these trays from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to start by taking all the stickers off. And they did come off fairly easy, I guess, because it's wood. Um, they didn't give me any trouble coming off. Next, I take my Rapid Fuse by Dap. I got this at Home Depot, and you guys, this stuff is literal magic. I probably didn't even have to clamp these, but I do use that dap to glue all of these together. So I start by glowing. <laughs> I start by gluing four rows, so three rows of four of the trays. And then once all of those were glued together, then I go in and I glue all of them together, if that makes sense. I also wanted to show you guys that those little clips from Dollar Tree, like the chip bag clips, they do work really good for like holding projects like these together. Once I had them all glued together, then I've been getting a lot of questions on how I make my faux stain. So I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I use this little mini badger. It is a paint stirrer. And I take some truffle Waverly chalk paint and some water and I mix that up really good. I then take a little bit of ink Waverly chalk paint and I just grab like, like this was a leftover popsicle stick that I just used to pull it out and like I said you only need a little dab depending on how dark you want it I didn't want mine very dark so I only put a little bit in there but just play with it you'll see the consistency if it's too thick add water if it's too thin then just add some more of your Waverly paint so once I had my stain all mixed up then I go in and I stain my entire piece front and back Next, I take three pieces of poplar, and I've been getting a lot of questions about this. I get these at my Home Depot for $3.24, and I do get them in four foot sections, so they are $3.24, so less than a dollar per foot, which for wood these days I feel is a really good deal, but I just lay that down over the front of my little cabinet whatever you want to call it I mark it and then cut those down to size now I wanted to do this project for a few different reasons number one I know that there's a lot of new people so I wanted to give you guys a new version of this project since it was such a big hit and I also wanted to make a bigger version so in my original version it was a much smaller because or a much smaller version because we used the crates but being that we're using the trays they're much wider um, and you can fit bigger items in here. Anyway, I stained the front pieces and then I also sanded down the edges just to give it a little bit of distressing. Now to cover up the holes at the top and the bottom of these trays, in my original video I had used 
large popsicle sticks to cover them but I thought that it would be fun to just use really thick cardstock it's not really going to matter because the side where you're going to cover is mostly solid you're just covering up that handle so anyway I take some scrapbook paper that I got from Michaels and this is a modern farmhouse bundle so there's a bunch of different kinds and I've used this in many videos, but I just measure out the space where this is gonna go, and then I use my Cricut paper trimmer to trim those down to size. Now, because the scrapbook paper isn't long enough, I did have to piece the top together, but really no big deal. Next, I measured the paper onto each individual cubby hole, and then I cut all of those down to size, and I had to cut out 24 of them. Once I had all of them cut out, then I use my Disappearing Purple Spray School Glue. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Um, but I did get it from Dollar Tree, and you guys, I love this stuff. It worked amazing for this. None of them are peeling up. And I did go a little bit crazy on this spray, so I did have to take a paper towel and kind of dab a little bit off. But it didn't you know, curl or wrinkle or anything like that. So I was definitely pleased with that. Next, I take those pieces of poplar and I just glue them down along the bottom edge of each row. Now in my original video, I used label holders but they didn't have handles and I've had these in my stash for a while I did get them from Amazon and they will be in my Amazon store link in the description box in my link tree so if you want to purchase these I believe they were fairly cheap and I think like 20 came in a pack um, but like I said I want I wanted this one to look a little bit different so I did go ahead and screw down all of those label holder handles <laughs> and then to give it a little bit more decorative feel, I did just take my uh, scrap scrapbook paper and I just cut out fake labels and I stuck those in where they're supposed to be. And I'm going to show you guys how to make all the little decor on the inside, but you guys, look how amazing just the crate turned out. I love it so much. Moving on to the first little trinket in our little display, I'm going to take one of these little mini terracotta pots that I got from Dollar Tree and some rocks and moss also from Dollar Tree. I put the rocks in the bottom of the terracotta pot and put some hot glue over it and then put the moss on top. I then grab three different size pumpkins from Dollar Tree. I leave one of them the cream color. I paint one of them moss color in Waverly. And then the smaller one, I used my mineral, I believe. <laughs> had to think about it for a minute. Now, looking back, I wish I had done that top one like a brown color because on camera, it looks like light blue or gray i'm not really too sure let me know in the comments down below if you like this color combo or if you would have used like a brown for the top little pumpkin but anywho i glued them all like i stacked them the larger one at the bottom with the smaller one at the top and then I went in with my antique wax and a very tiny brush and I just kind of highlighted those little divots in the pumpkins. Now it was a little too bright for me so I did just go in with a little paper towel and just wiped off that excess wax. Last but not least, I go in with my mini chip brush and my antique wax and I just dry brush all the way around that mini terracotta pot. Look how cute this is, you guys. I am a sucker for anything mini. I did just put a little bit more moss and some faux wheat in there just because it looked a little bit empty and you guys I just love the way that this turned out. Stick with me because all of these mini projects are really quick and easy. So I have, I have had this little windmill for a while now and I didn't really like it because the greenery at the bottom just looked weird to me and I don't know. I got it for a dollar at Dollar General and I've had it for probably seven years now. But I wanted to give it a little makeover so me and my little helper painted everything except the galvanized pieces in the front with my Cashew Waverly chalk paint. 
Next, I go in once again with my antique wax and my mini chip brush, and I just dry brush all the way around my mi <laughs> all the way around my windmill. Good lord, you guys! It's it would not believe it would not be a Melissa video if I did not trip over my words. Whew, say that 10 times fast once again. <laughs> but anyway, once I had the dry brushing done as much as I liked, as I always say, dry brushing is personal preference. So if you don't like it, just leave that step out. But last but not least, I just go in with my moss and I fill in that bottom part where the greener, greenery was. And this really made it look fall and give you those warm and cozy feels and I just love the way that this windmill turned out. Okay guys, when I tell you this one is so simple, I'm not even joking. You can do this with your eyes closed. So I take this home sweet home little decor piece from Dollar Tree and my little Bella is right here with me just so you guys know. <laughs> Most of the time you can just assume that my kids are right up my butt just so you know. But anyway, I just take some Moss Waverly chalk paint and mix it with some water. I stain this and then dry brush it with some Cashew Waverly chalk paint and you guys literally boom that easy that quick and I love the way that this is just very simple and very fall let me know in the comments down below which mini is your favorite so moving on I take this little pumpkin from Dollar Tree and originally I was going to use this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby I just love the truck and the colors but the color scheme I was going for was just kind of like a neutral fall so once I cut this out and had it glued down I put it in my little cabinet and then I realized that it just kind of didn't go with all the other decor. So all I do is I go back to my scrapbook stash. I pull out a piece of scrapbook paper that looks like burlap, cut that out, and then glue that down with my disappearing purple glue stick. Next, I take these little wooden shape words that my sweet subscriber Cindy sent me. Thank you so much, Cindy. That was so, so sweet. And I pull out the word grateful, and then I kind of just play with it where I want the wording, and then I take the sticker off of the back and just put that right where I wanted it. Next, I glued the original original raffia bow back to the, back to the top, I should say. I was gonna say bottom no Melissa it's not at the bottom it's at the top but I also take these little greenery dried flowers I guess that's what you want to call them from Dollar Tree I clipped off a few and then just glued those on either side of the raffia bow and I think it just gives that little extra touch that it was needing and I love the way that this turned out again simple yet so beautiful so moving on I'm going to take this little picture frame from Dollar Tree and it has two pieces of glass in it. So I take one of the pieces of glass out. I take the little photo that was in it out as well and then I trace it and cut it out. Now in the original photo that was on here, the paper was smaller than the glass. So I did just follow that theme and once I had it cut down, then I cut I cut it down a little bit further. Next, I take my Oh My Gourd I Love Fall Transfer from Chalk Couture. I fuzz it really, really, really good because you are putting this on glass and glass is a non-porous surface. You definitely wanna make sure you have plenty of fuzz on your transfer. Now, because all of the wording would not fit, I did just go with the gourd and the I Love Fall and some of the greenery, and I used my black chalk paste to transfer that on. When you peel it back, the magic is revealed, you guys. Look at this. So crisp, so clean, and I swear to you, it literally took me 30 seconds to do this. Now, because the bottom was missing a little something, I did just kind of like play around with my transfer and I moved it all around to put two little pieces of greenery at the bottom. Look how cute this is you guys. I love it so much. I think it gives such a cool element with the transfer design on the front and the scrapbook paper in the back. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. 
moving on to the next project you guys we are just going through these quick 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 and anybody can do these and that's what I love most about it so I take this little house galvanized piece from Dollar Tree and because the base is too long I just unscrewed it from the base and made my own base with four Jenga blocks Next, I took this little mini wreath from Hobby Lobby. They come in like a pack of five, I believe, for like three bucks. So definitely, definitely a good deal. And then I take those little dried flowers from Dollar Tree that we used in the previous pumpkin. And I just start by snipping them off and then gluing them all the way around the wreath. Next, I take these little pieces of faux wheat that I got from Walmart. I cut a pick off of the bigger pick, and then I just cut little tiny pieces of the wheat off, and then I just randomly stick those into the wreath all the way around where I saw fit. Next, I take my little mini wreath, and I use some hot glue, and I glue that down to the galvanized piece. Next, I take my little piece and the same screws that were originally on it and I just screw it right down to the base that I made. And then last but not least, because this would not fit in there perfectly with the edges of the house, I did just have to clip those off, which you can't really tell. I mean, you can see it, but it doesn't make or break this piece. And you guys, I don't know, this might be one of my favorites out of all 12 but you'll have to let me know in the comments down below what you think next i'm going to take one of these little pumpkins from dollar tree and there are two different ones yes these are an online exclusive um, but there are two different ones so one is like a taller one and one is a shorter one so this is the taller one and then I take my pumpkin transfers from Chalk Couture and I just wanted to show you that they do sell um, pumpkin cutouts to go with these transfers but obviously I did not use that I just used the pumpkin this little pumpkin design and because this was a shorter one I did have to transfer it on pull it up and then dry it once it was dry I lined it back up to finish the design next I just made a very simple bow out of the brown leather ribbon from Dollar Tree and then I also made a triple jute bow and I glued those together last but not least I take this and I just glue it to the top side of this pumpkin I wasn't too sure where I wanted it but I ultimately decided on the side and look how cute this is you guys I love it so much like I said before I am such a sucker for mini anything that this all of these projects are just right up my alley For the next mini, I take this solid little house piece. I believe this is MDF board, but don't quote me. I don't really know, but it is really heavy. Um, and it had these little felt flowers on the back. So I did start by just taking those off. Next, I go in to, or I go on the back, I should say, and pull the stickers off. And then I give the back a distressed coat of my Moss Wear Really Chalk paint, as well as around the edges. Next, I take this other pumpkin gourd, whatever you want to call it. I don't really know what shape this is. I believe it's a gourd. And I just like this pattern. So I lay it down on my little house and then I go in with my dune chalk paste and I transfer that design on. I then peel back and reveal. Look how crisp and clean this is, you guys. I'm literally addicted to chalk couture, if you guys have not realized that. Now, originally, I was going to use this little calendar piece in the back, but we are going to use it for another project. Just keep that in mind. But up against that cream color, I, I, did, I felt that it did not look right. So I took this little... Um, 
unfinished wood ornament piece from Dollar Tree, the pumpkin one. I gave that a distress coat of my Moss Waverly chalk paint. And then to give it a little bit of dimension, I just put a little bit of antique wax on the end of my paintbrush. And I just kind of dry brush those where the indentations would be on the pumpkin. Now that while that was drying, I took two small popsicle sticks. I laid it down on the top of the house and just kind of marked where it would need to be cut for these to fit together nicely on a 45 degree angle. I also did the same thing for the bottom piece and then I cut those down to size and stained those with my antique Waverly wax. Once those were dry, then I make sure that they're going to fit together nicely and glue those down with some hot glue, as well as gluing that pumpkin down with hot glue. Next, I just made a very simple triple jute bow. I glued that down to the top of the pumpkin, and then literally, you guys, that quick and easy to make such high-end, cute-looking decor pieces for this cabinet. Moving on to the next project, I take this little plaque piece, I don't really know what you want to call it, from Dollar Tree, and I give it a distress coat of my Moss Waverly chalk paint on the sides as well as the front. I then go in with that little calendar piece that we cut out in the previous project, and I glue that down with my disappearing purple glue stick. Next, to cover up those edges, I put a bead of hot glue down and I just go all the way around this little piece with my jute. Next, I go in with my cashew and my mini chip brush and I just dry brush all the way around the edges as well as the entire piece. This is just gonna make it look old and weathered and rustic, but once again, if you don't like that look, then you can skip that step. Next, I take two little pieces of wheat. I glue those down at the bottom. I make a simple bow with my brown buffalo check. I glue that to the middle of the wheat. And literally that was it, you guys. I love this little piece so much. I always think I have a favorite, but then I see the next one and I'm like, okay, maybe this one is, no. So per usual, I can't ever choose, but I know you'll let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite. So moving on to the next project, we are coming up to almost the end, you guys. So thank you for bearing with me. But I take this little Halloween picture, I don't know what you wanna call it, ornament I don't really know but um, they come in a pack of two and then I gave it a distress coat of my cashew chalk paint next I cut out this rub on transfer eucalyptus wreath and the easiest way to do this you guys is just to lay it down get a scraper or like I'm using a square dowel here and I just kind of rub it all over and then as I'm pulling it up you want to pull up slowly and if it's not coming up like if it's not staying on your piece then kind of rub on it as you're pulling up that plastic piece once I had that transferred on then I cut out the word gather from a different rub on transfer from Dollar Tree and I transfer that onto the bottom and then I distress it with my antique wax Last but not least, this was a little bit too tall for my liking in my little cabinet, so I did just cut the bottom off with my utility knife. And look how gorgeous this is, you guys. Literally so simple and so easy, but it just looks so amazing and so fall-like. Okay, you guys, these are the last two. So I got these at Michael's for 98 cents, I believe. Maybe they were exactly a dollar, but I know that they were a dollar or 98 cents. So anyway, I measure out the middle and then I take some scrapbook paper that I liked. One was just like a raised design. I don't even know what kind of pattern that is, but it's just plain white 
and I cut that down to size. Once I had that one down to size, then I took this faux wood piece of scrapbook paper. Both of these I did get at Michael's and I cut that down as well. Now because I wanted to be able to see that beautiful design on this scrapbook paper, I did go in with my antique wax and just kind of dry brushed, mainly trying to focus on the edges. And then once I had that all done, then I go in with my glue stick and I glue both of those down. Next, I take a little pumpkin from Dollar Tree and I just cut that in half and then I paint that with my Moss Waverly chalk paint. I then just glue that down to the faux wood sign and then I took some more of those wooden words that I believe Cindy got from the Target dollar spot. I pick out the one that I liked and then there I had this little stem left over from a different pumpkin and I just put that right into the top of that pumpkin. Um, before I did that then I glued the word grateful down to the top and then last but not least I just distressed the edges with my antique wax once again and once again so simple and easy to get such cute little decor pieces. Okay, you guys, if you are still here, leave a yellow heart in the comments down below because y'all are the real OGs. <laughs> anyway, I take three hay bale, mini hay bales from Dollar Tree and I glue two to the bottom and then one on top of the two in the middle. I then take two little tiny pumpkin pumpkins that were on the skewers from Dollar Tree or picks, whatever you want to call it. And I painted those with my moss and then I dry brushed those with my antique wax. I then just pulled those off of the pick once they were dry and I just kind of shoved them in on either side of that middle hay bale. I didn't have to glue them because they did fit pretty nicely. And then I took this pop-up sticker like pumpkin sticker from Dollar Tree and I glued two Jenga blocks to the back of it and then glued that down on top of the hay bale. Now because all of my decor pieces didn't have any orange in them, the middle pumpkin on this sticker was orange so I did just tone that down with my moss chalk paint and then I took the word thankful and it was just natural wood the wooden uh, lettering from the Target dollar spot and I uh, stained that with my antique wax and then I put that down at the top. Again, because it's a sticker, all I had to do was peel back the backing and then stick that down. And literally, that was it, you guys. I love every single piece in this cabinet. I love the cabinet itself. I can't wait to decorate it for every holiday. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys would like to see a Christmas version of this once Christmas rolls around. I would love to bring that to you guys, like I said, a zillion times. Anything mini, I am just such a sucker for. So I would be so excited to do that for you guys. And I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you have not clicked that red subscribe button yet, you might as well become part of my crafty family. Farmhouse decor is my specialty, but I do a lot on this channel. So anything craft related, you have come to the right place. Also, all of the items that I use for chalk couture will be in my link tree. So definitely check out for that or look out for that. Yeah, check out for that. Good Lord, you guys, it's time for me to go. I love each and every one of you so, so much. Don't forget, if nobody has sold you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. I love you with all my heart and soul. And don't forget to text me the word ketone or chalk or just to be in the text crew to get alerts for new videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.